Hello, everybody. Looks like my camera is dead. Oh, that's right. I'm in the middle of an update on my camera. So, no, we're not doing Starfinder. But that's okay. We are doing a little bit of uh, the Dungeons and the Dragons. So, let me check my... Uh, there it is. Get this... Uh, camera going here we are yay so this is the software i use x split vcam it is free uh the one i use is paid for just because it's not that expensive it's a one-time cost it's not a monthly thing um And it uh, gets rid of the watermark. Um, but the watermark is not that intrusive. Uh, so I know a lot of players who use it, XSplit VCAM, because they like the thing for free. Um, let's see. So I have all these different backgrounds that I've added. I don't think any of these are from the original except for this one with the spotlight. Um, I think I'm going to do my Underdark theme today. Why not? Because that's what we're starting with. Okay, so today, uh, today's dungeon, we're going to change the scale. So slash scale UI all together, one word. We'll make it 115 because there we go. So you guys can see a little bit. So they're in the middle of a group um, uh, of a dungeon. And so I just want to check and make sure everything's ready. In my mind, everything is done. Everything is ready to go. I don't have to do anything. But sometimes I forget. And I want to make sure, to also not only just to make sure everything's ready, but to uh, have it fresh in my mind. As I'm thinking about it, because it's tomorrow night. So this will have it fresh and ready to go. Um, the other thing I do is I have a book, a little notebook that I have close by. And when we're playing, somebody will mention something and I'll be like, oh, okay, I need to code that. Or, okay, I need to add that item in later. Or I need to do this later. And so I make my little notes and I check it. So uh, it looks like I've done everything I need to do for... Tonight, I do need. I am going to check one other thing for one of the characters. So we might do some coding later today. We will check it out when we get there. Um, so first of all, let's take a look at our map. So this is the DM map of where they are right now. Here is the combat map. Alrighty, and one thing I wanted to check, open this up, unlock it. I'm going to turn off line of sight, turn off lighting, zoom in. I, I don't have water in here, so let's add some water effects, shall we? So you come up here to effects, and we, I mean, we come down here to add effects layer first, make sure it's highlighted. And now we're going to add effects. Um, let's see. So water makes it sort of wavy, wail, wail, wail. Ocean is more, a little bit of that, but not quite as much. Uh, it's more staticky. Uh, you can also layer them on top of each other. Good morning, Mr. Atomic. Uh, well, let's see what Atomic was playing earlier today. He does an awesome stream every morning. Be sure to check him out. It's Atomic underscore Hero Squad. This morning he ended with Smite. He does stuff like Paladins and, and uh, Gems of War, Asphalt 9, Smite. Um... 
Animal Crossing, and then a bunch of different uh, either indie games or new games that come out, um, Pokemon Snap. Um, so he does a lot of different games as well. So if you don't like what he's playing, leave him on in the background and come back in an hour, and he'll probably be playing something else that you do like. And if you watch him for a little while, you'll get enough points and you can say, hey, play something else. He has that thing, so. Oh, we got to play with uh, Game Lord TV. Very cool. All right, so we're making water. And not in the uh, bathroom way, but uh, in the water effect. So let's go to, we'll start with water. Why not? It makes sense. It is water that we're trying to add. So what had happened was actually, and actually what I'm going to do is the entire dungeon is flooding. So I'm actually going to add the this water effect to the entire dungeon because there is water everywhere. So um, it's going to actually make it pretty easy. So let's zoom out a little bit. Um, this is a little intense, and no, they're not. They're underground. They're not intense, but uh, the water effect is a little too much. So let's turn this down. Let's see. So we got intensity, speed. I don't mind the intensity. I just I don't want the speed to be this high. So let's take it down to ten. Okay, let's take it down to five. doesn't seem to be changing that much so let's change the intensity down to five and let's change the droplet down to 10 see what that does there we go so it's not quite as high um, put this back to 15 There we go. It's not bad, not bad. So what this will look like to the players, so if you go back to your play mode, go to line of sight, lighting, and a player view. This is what it looks like to the players. I remember who has the light spell. Um, she does down here. There we go. <clears throat> it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, let's go ahead and turn it down just a smidge more. We'll go back to our effects. Go to our effects layer. Make sure that's highlighted. And we'll we will bring this down to, let's say, 12. There we go. So it's just subtle enough. So the water right now is about a foot high. Um, between, well, maybe six inches or so. Anyway, so these four people, let's go ahead and move them over. So what had happened was um, this character wasn't here that day. So that's why they're still way behind. Now, if you if I just drag her over, then her line of sight will show all the stuff, including the outside of the map, and I don't want that to happen. So what you do as a GM, only GMs can do this, is you click on the token, or actually go to play mode. You click on the token, and you hold down Shift. And then you notice there's no line of sight. So she's not being looking at everything. And then we will drop her here. These two are just going to wait in this room over here. Oops, she's outside the map. Boom. The other alternative, he also was not here, is to... Uh, 
turn off and then turn back on line of sight and that will hide everything again but that means everywhere that they've been will not be shown so I prefer to do it this way uh, and that and if you do that you can then drag the token around where they were but it's a lot of work it's just simpler to do it hold shift and move them all right so this is where they are so um, we got everybody caught up with each other moved around uh, let's check our we'll go ahead and turn so we have our ooze coming in um, so I'm going to have two different oozes the way it's written there are four oozes but black ooze is pretty tough and these guys are only second level and uh, I don't see them being able to defeat two oozes all right, so we have, look at the XP, blink, 785 to 900, cool. So they will be 735. Um, Atomic, redeeming a quote, appreciate it. it. Says, I am playing with my cleric deck. If I make a mistake, that would be a clerical error. From my Magic the Gathering stream. Check it out on YouTube. And that's number 24. I think I'm up to 52, 53 quotes now. So. <laughs> yep, so. We're getting there. You can also pull up a certain one. So like Atomic Hero Squad, if he's feeling unappreciated, he can go, quote, 13. Because that's his quote. All right. I'm getting some little... Liquid refresh, fresh, freshment. Today's refreshment is brought to us by Coke Zero. Not only Coke Zero, but Orange Vanilla Coke Zero. And for a little insight into my weirdness, um, most flavored drinks, Coke included, like Cherry Coke, Vanilla Coke, all that stuff, is too strong for my personal taste. Um, it's just over. The, the flavoring is just overpowering. Um, Diet Coke Lime and now Coke Zero Orange Vanilla are the only two that I don't mind. I don't think are overpowered. Usually what I do, if I have a Cherry Coke for some reason, I use Coke Zero now. But if I have a Cherry Coke Zero, I will typically take a regular Coke Zero and then combine the two to bring down the flavor a little bit. Anyway, what does this have to do with D&D? Everything. If you, don't, if you have a thirsty dungeon master, then the party gets killed. So, All right, so um, A13 is very lucky, by the way. Uh, I may have mentioned it once or twice in the stream before, but uh, my wife and I were married on Friday the 13th. By choice. And it's cool because that means uh, usually once or twice throughout the year there is a Friday the 13th. So we could say, hey, happy anniversary. High five. Um, every time it's Friday the 13th. Anyway. Um, so we've got our map set up right. So what I'm doing is I'm checking out So they've been given, uh, checking the experience, make sure the experience is correct, it is. Um, I also want to check the note. Let's see. So what I do for my players is, on, on I try to do this on all my campaigns, is I have a proper nouns 
uh, or in this case, people in places note. Um, one for me and one for them. And people in places. This time I was smart and said, hey, why isn't this opening up? You freak, open up. That's just weird. Why is nothing happening when I click on it? All the other ones are working just fine. Oh, I found it. <laughs> I know you guys are at home saying, it's a to your right, you dork. There we go. All right, so I have my scale UI set up so big that uh, I don't have a lot of space on my screen so that you guys can see some of them. All right, PC and PCs. Uh, okay, so this was just a quick note for me during at the beginning. Um, but people in places. So I have this set up so the players. This is public. So the players, ever, if they ever have a question about what's going on, they can just look at it here. So this dude doesn't know about Control One. How to get rid of the links? So it's Control One. Um, all of these are pictures, so if they want to see what these things look like. So, he's a fish guy. Um, all right, so I don't know why he has these duplicated. Oh, he moved it up to make it. Alphabetical, so we'll get rid of this for him. Actually, I don't know what he did, but anyway, again with this, again with this. So control one. So what happened was he, I had put some in there with pictures like this. Boom. And then he just hit enter to make a new entry. So it automatically adds a link space for you. Yeah, it's like a TV, children's TV show. Over oh, there, Sven. You found it. Yay. Reminds me of uh, Atomic's prompt when you give bits. And... I could be lying, so go to Atomic Hero Squad and give them some bits. See if I'm right. I dare you. I dare you. Yeah, it's it's a very cool art um, because it's oh, somewhat hard to explain. There are I know uh, a cavern wall that has been dug out in certain places. These huge stalagmites are hanging, uh, are coming up from the floor. Stalactites are hanging from the ceiling, and they've dug out some of these stalactites and made rooms inside. The stalactites are so big, and then there's these uh, rope bridges in between them. Underneath is this chasm, but there's giant spiders that live there, so there's webbing all stretched out in the cavern. There's this waterfall next to them. Um, can get really confusing so this picture is a great way to give you an idea the characters an idea of what they are where they are because um, they didn't come here they just woke up here and have no idea what was going on this is a prison that they were in um and they have since escaped and they're still being chased by the late the lady in that picture all right so anyway so here's my people and places um, I want to add Glabgool. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So here we go. Boof. Control 1. I think that's how you spell it. Let's see. Dripping death. 
Glabagool. It is two L's, okay. I mean two O's. Glabagool. All right. And anyway, so this way, they're like, what was the name of the person who kept us captive? Well, they can go here and uh, they can look and see that Lady Ilvara was her name. There she is. She's the one who kept them captive. A little spider pet. Um, so they have pictures. They have reminders of who all these things are. Um, and what I did this time is I asked one of the players. I said, hey, would you please do this? Help me keep it up. Um, because there's one last thing I have to do. So it also gives a, it's what that person is from the player's perspective. I might know, say, Eldeth, I might know her as this, you know, great dwarven princess um, who got captured. And if they get her back to her town, then they'll be given, need to be given a magic item. They just know her as this red-headed dwarf lady with a sword and she with a shield and hammer so having it from their our point of view is a is pretty cool anyway so it's a tool uh not the player who d t keeps track of it but the actual note itself um there we go boom So we're um, so they're looking pretty good. Uh, so this pudding pits is supposed to have every single one is have is supposed to have a black pudding. See, there's four of that. I mean, these are pit traps. Uh, it's supposed to have the, the black pudding. Um, let's take a look at the black pudding. You see, the black pudding is CR four, challenge rating four. Uh, So I think we'll just keep it the way it is. We'll just keep it with one. This is going to be a tough. He's got 85 hit points to keep it that way. There are a couple players who have new people. Yes, I did. Okay, it's right here. There are a couple players who have new um, characters that they've already made. Luckily, my players don't do that a lot. I used I know used to have a, an acquaintance that I would play with all the time, and he would four or five sessions in, he would sit there and uh, want a new character, bring in a new person, make a new thing. Um, luckily, I don't have those issues as much with this group. All right, so here we go. So they're going to come down here. Let's see what this fountain of madness does. Wow, so there's a lot of treasure here, so that's nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these oozes here, but They're only going to be they're only going to attack if they're touched. Let me check out the other characters real quick. Uh, Okay, cool.
All right, so we have the, our, our big ooze. We have, let me open up this uh, line of sight and make sure that we can see they're set up correctly. Get rid of player preview. So enable, disable player vision previews, but I just clicked over here. So now we can see the room and the door. So presumably they aren't gonna go through this door until they take care of the big ooze up here. I'm gonna go ahead and add them to the counter real quick to so see where they are on the map. One, two, three, four. Okay, so four to the west. Gotcha. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the actual statues. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of lighting so we can see a little bit better. We're going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these guys from my combat tracker. So to do that, you go right click, delete, right click, delete. Now you could also go down here to click on the menu and say delete from tracker only foes. But that would also get rid of the black ooze I have. So I don't want to do that, the black pudding. So I don't want to do that. Right click down here, delete, confirm, delete. So now all my oozes are gone. All my oozes are gone. And the ooze is gray. And the ooze is gray. So we're gonna add some statues in here and some rubble in here. So we go click, we go to our paint, we add painting layer. So I want them to be below the water. Um, so the statues are going to be above the water. The rubble is going to be below the water. So we're going to have two different layers. Go to our assets. Go to all. And rubble, rubble, rubble. And we're going to take this one. I like the one that's scattered a little bit more. Throw it into my little section here. Right now it's 1.2, so it's huge. So we're going to make it down to 1. Keep the uh, aspect lock. See, so it's better. And now go into the tint and we're going to turn down the color. We want it to be more of a gray. That's better. There we go. Okay. We go to our stamp. And we throw this in here. Chink. And then we're going to flip it. So it looks a little different. Chink. So we've got two piles of rubble here. Um, and actually, this I'm going to add, uh, shrink it down by holding Shift. I mean, that turns it. I'm doing that too. Um, and then I'm going to shrink it down. Control, bring it down. I'm going to add some more. Click. 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 All right. So now as I look at it, it's just more rubble, more pieces. Um, and then we're going to take and we're going to take this and throw it down below the water. There you go. So that's underwater. Now, let's see, we'll go to our type in here. Again, we still got all. We'll type statue, see what comes up. Cool thing is you can use any token. 
Um, so we want, I don't want a picture like this. I want an actual top down view. Should have just picked a token. But uh, yeah, there we go. Here's our statues. I like this one. This one's good because these are supposed to be more of a unknown blobby type thing. So we're going to slide you over. So we're going to add another paint layer. Adding a paint layer. Click on it. So this is going to be, we'll, we can rename it by double clicking it. And this will be statues. We will go ahead and rename this one to Debris. I know it's debris. Relax. I like calling it Debris. All right, there we go. Um, we're going to turn the, the t tint again, make it a little bit more dark. Too dark, too much, too much. Bring it back, bring it back. There we go. So it matches the ooze. Um, a sim simpler way of doing that would just be use the color picker here and just pick one of these grays. But I didn't think about it at the time. There you go. All right, so now we have our statue. Uh, this is too big. Minisprietma mispronunciation is more fun that's right if you're doing it on purpose i agree all right so we're going to go to 0 0.8 keep the aspect lock um still too big we want this to be 0 0.6 there we go all right so now we shift to turn it And bloop. We're going to flip it. All right, um, and so we'll see how this plays out. So now we have our debris and we have our statues. And the debris is under the water and the statues are above the water. Um, I'm also going to take, just because I'm anal and I think it's cool. We're going to go to, um, so perhaps that phrase is a little harsh for those of you with um, virgin ears. We'll call it CDO, which is OCD, but in alphabetical order. I like to be particular. I'm going to go to the water effect here, go to my effects layer. I'm going to turn off the water effect on the fountain because the fountain is not underwater yet. So. We're going to, uh, and um, and actually, well, I'm going to put the statues under the water to do something cool. So watch this. Boom. So the statues are under the water, right? So now we go here to hide area because we're hiding the effect. Stopping the effect in a sense. So um, we're going to go to Alt, hold down the Alt key, use your mouse, no, click, hide area, enable mask, disable mask, ah, is that why, because the mask, what's happening, okay, so let's see, Enable the mask, reveal area, 
All right, so hold on. I think I have to change. I think I had to enable the mask in order, in order to tweak it. So I'm just going to do a quick. I'm enabling the mask in this entire area. Boom, there we go. Now I go to hide area. <laughs> Come back in here. Hold Alt. And now it stops moving. Why? Because the water is below this statue mark. And um, it was below the edge of the statue, uh, I mean the fountain. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with this. So it's a little zoomed in, that's why. There we go, boom. So now the statue, I mean the fountain, is not underwater. What we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to also hold Alt. And we're going to go around the statue itself. There you go. See? So the, the legs are underwater. The body is not. Huh? How cool is that? Man, how cool is that? So I'm going to click the mouse wheel and watch as nothing happens. There we go. Come on. All right, so we zoom out and we'll zoom back in over here. So again, holding down the Alt key uh, and I'm just going tracing the top of the statue. Boom. Stuff like this, is it important? No. Will my players even notice? Probably not. Will I probably point it out to them because it's cool? Probably. Anyway, so there's your statues. The top of them are not moving. The base is underwater. This, the fountain itself is not underwater. Very cool. If we wanted to, we could also go into the doors. And uh, turn the doors off. Because the doors are not moving. And by doors, I mean door. Because there's only one. Cool, cool, cool. So, you're like, hey, Sven, I don't believe you. There you go. See, the door doesn't move now. So, anyway, tweaking the map, making it look a little cooler. Now we're ready to go for when we play. So, we'll go ahead and lock it. Pop it and lock it and pop it and lock it. All right. Boink, boink, boink. Move this back over. Boom. Why is he hidden? Oh, that's why, because he's in the combat tracker. He is a friend. So let's see, combat tracker. Like this. So I hid him from view because he couldn't play that day. So I changed, in order to do that, you change him to a neutral or um, even hostile or a faction. Any of those will let you then hide the NBC, so the other players can't see him. But uh, now he's back, so I'll make him friendly again. Boom, there we go. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at one of our characters. Uh, we have about 15 minutes left. And this new person is a pugilist. All right, so I'm looking to see, okay, what his abilities are as a pugilist.
Moxie, I don't think. Um, Yes, it is. All right, so let's see. Bagpipes, 12. What does 12 mean? I think that's a mistake. Bagpipes. Iron Chin and Fisticuffs. Okay, so let's... So these are... So what I do is I like to open up all the... Abilities. Features, in this case. Uh, traits, things like that. And make sure that they're coded correctly. Um... We already have a dude named Ruggs, so let's go to his character as well. So what, what I'm doing is I'm having this be like an interdimensional swap. So there's a thing called Feyrez, which is this areas of like sp sparkly stuff. That's right, he's a pugilist, punchy punch. With the, the word glowing motes and things, and magic does weird stuff in these areas. So. They're going to climb through up through this river to get out of this place they're in now. And the uh, they're going to go through this area of this Feyrez stuff. And he's going to switch places whoosh, with this other dimensional rugs. The other dimensional rugs has been in the same situation. Everything is the same except for the other guy was a, a pugilist and grew up as a pugilist. Um, and I'm going to make Karin is not going to be a raccoon person. Karin will be a knoll in the other world, I think. All right, so let's see. Um, I want to see what actions I put in here. So we have, here we go, Cobalt Power. Let's go to the actions. Good. So we can just drag this over. Boom. Back attack attacks. Sunlight Sense of Boom. So what we're doing is, uh, is we're putting in the codes. Now, a lot of this has already been coded. Uh, I use Rob 2 es stuff. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Open up my library to show you all the modules I'm using. See, so this is race traits, 5e effects coding race traits. Um, and what this does is it makes them spells. So it's in the spell list. You can just type Cobalt. Boom, and I have it. You can also make this yourself. So, like, I made up, made this brace up, pugilist moxie, and go to spells. Let's see if it's if I saved it. I did. So then, what I did is I dragged this into the spells. So now, if I have any other, um person who has, wants to become a pugilist who's going to use the same thing I can just drag it from here onto their character sheet uh, so for things like healing potions if you don't have the coding for a healing potion you can type it in make it create it over here drag it into your spells and then drag it onto all the rest of your, of your players in their actions page so they'll have it so we're going to change this to cobalt it's going to say, oh, I'll make it cobalt. And what this does is it makes a new section entitled cobalt. There you go. So he's set and ready to go. This has a one-time use because he only gets to use it once every rest or every long rest, whatever it is. And it's all coded the correct way. Get rid of the spells. 
All right, and so now we're going to do this. So we've got all the, the uh, cobalt stuff, so that's good to go. Ready action, we'll go ahead and put that over there as well. Again, we're going to change this to action. And I'm actually going to put that, um, I'm also going to put the dodge action. And the help action in in here as well. Again, type action. So there's hide, help, ready. A lot of people put four of those, these four in here. I find that very few people actually use the hide action. Um, but these are all coded to work. See, they all have the code for it. Um, let's see, this is, so we've got the help, the ready, and the dodge. And you can click the magnifying glasses to get rid of them. Boom. Get rid of this, because it was a mistake. There we go. All right, so. You all see has brass knuckles. He's unarmed. Um, I think I'm going to give him darts, too. I, I don't mind him having darts. Let's look at his abilities. So he has simple weapons, improvised weapons, a whip, and a hand crossbow. All right, so we'll give him a hand crossbow. Go to his inventory. So he's got all the same stuff that uh, Rugs did, except for the darts. So we're going to go to items. They're not in alphabetical order. Ooh, I don't like it when my stuff, remember the CDO, the OCD in alphabetical order. I don't like it when my lists over here are not in, alph are not in the order they're supposed to be. All right, type in looking up the hand. Wow, there's a lot of hand stuff, okay. Hand crossbow, player's handbook. So we're just gonna drag him over, boink. And then we're going to type in bolt. And we're going to go here to the player's handbook again. We're going to say he has, we're going to say slash die, which means you roll the die. And we're going to say he's going to have I want him to have at least 10, but not more than 20. So 3D, 3D4 is, um, 3D3 is 9, 4 is 12. Right, I'm going to do 3D4 plus 8. So that gives him a minimum of 11, as many as 20. All right, so it's 16 crossbow bolts. You got some good rolls there. Bolt, boom, 16. And it is equipped, so now we go to the actions. We go ammo, 16. Hand crossbow, boink, boink, boink. There we go. All right. Um, So that information is ready for him. So now we're done with, with his first character. So now we're going to this guy, checking out what he can do. So Moxie, I've already done for some of it. Uh, it's right here. Pugilist, oh, that's Pugilist Moxie's Brace Up. You start knowing three features, Brace Up, The Old One Two, and Stick and Move. You learn more Moxie features as you gain levels in this class. Um, that's what Moxie does. And was it coded correctly? It is 1d6 plus 4, okay.
All right, so what we're going, we need to do though, is we need to use a moxie points. Pugilist moxie, so uh, a number of moxie points. Your pugilist level determines the maximum number of moxie points as shown in the column of the pugilist table. Hello, Mr. Drake. Um, howdy, howdy. Uh, they're not pre-gens. Uh, they are... This character is switching over to... He's, he's sort of morphing his character. So um, having them go in through this magical field that he's just going to switch dimensions. So it's going to be this, it's the same build, same character. It's just that one is a monk, and now this one is a pugilist. Uh, they're level two, so uh, it was a matter of do I want to keep the continuity of the game and really be a hard ass about it, or am I going to let this guy switch characters because that's something he really wants to do? So, in the uh, you know he's I, I figured it's a one time situation. We'll give it a shot and see what happens. Anyway, so. I'm going through because this is a homebrew pugilist is a homebrew. Um, I'm going through and making sure that everything is coded correctly. Uh, and how am I doing on affiliate? I am at an average of 2.8 viewers per hour. I need three average viewers per hour, and that's all I need. So I'm I'm much closer. I used to be down at 1.9, uh, 2.1. Now I'm at 2.8. So missed it, missing it by this much. Uh, uh, very soon. Very soon. And when it happens, uh, I know probably overestimating your curiosity, but when that happens, I'm going to take off a day, at least one day from work and just spend that eight hours that I would normally be working. Um, actually, the uh, that time I would normally be working um, and just trying to inundate and trying to learn trying to make sure my I have chat triggers trying to make sure I, I put uh, um, and make emo and get emojis I want, I want I want all the stuff I want all the stuffs for the uh, as an affiliate so charger eight one one seven hello um, so tomorrow, if you're asking about Starfinder and Fantasy Grounds, um, tomorrow I'll be doing some prep on, uh, in Starfinder. Same thing I'm doing today with D&D I'm doing with Starfinder. Also, you can uh, check out the lists. I have a couple different lists, um, playlists of live Starfinder role-playing using Fantasy Grounds Unity. So, uh, if you're curious how that works, uh, check them out. There's a uh, Starfinder is in in the Sven Zone, uh, Dawn of Flame, and Dead Sun. So the two adventure paths I'm doing one are are now level ten. The other group is level two right now. So check them out. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, come back tomorrow, or you can watch them live on Sundays at 5:30. Is when we start Pacific time. But it's so great to have you there, Charger. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so my time is almost up. I do have to, I do have a drop dead time today. Uh, normally I sort of play it by ear. Today I do have to get going. So let's check a look. I just want to check and see how many, um, if you want to know about your character's class, we need to find out how many Maki points he has. So let's see what's in the actual pugilist. Here it is, build. So moxie points at level two, you get two. Okay. So we're going to go back to our actions. We go here to Pugilist Moxie. We open it up. And two in arrest. So why is it only giving him one? That's weird. Okay. So we're going to go here to preparation. So this. And we'll change this to two. Two. That's just weird because it, it should be either like this, 
where you can set how many and however many per rest or it should be what it said right here which is two uses per rest so I'm not sure what's wrong I thought about mixing up theme on one of my tables but I think my mind would break if I do <laughs> yeah I have a different themes for all my tables um, that you're talking about this what it looks like in the background um, yeah, all my tables have different ones, and I will change them on occasion, just randomly change things. Anyway, so now we go back to combat, or standard, let's see, standard, yep, so now it's got the two. Anywho, so cool, 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 uh, let's... This one here, not wearing any armor, it's their armor class is equal to their constitution modifier, so that's in here, armor. No dex, but con instead, actually. Uh, that's right. So that's built, he's built a little differently. It does not add his dex at all, which is a little odd, but that's the way it works for the pugilist. Um, and the last one is uh, you get a dice, fisticuffs. So fisticuffs, baby. Uh, when you ran Rick and Morty, you had a different one every night. That was fascinating. <laughs> yes, uh, that one I did on purpose. Yep. Every so uh, Rick and Morty was a lot of fun, um, and uh, that was one of the things I did because they were jumping dimensions and things, and they jumped dimensions in the show. So every night we played, the characters, the players didn't know what character they were using. They were pre-generated character from Rick and Morty, and um, so the players randomly had different play uh, characters every night. We played the theme would change every time so it was fun all right so we are finished wrapping up thank you for hanging out with me guys thank you for asking questions and saying hello in the chat like subscribe all that happy stuff just come back tomorrow to uh, check out what's happening in Starfinder and whatever else you do enjoy the rest of your day